This is an extract from the Leader Coronavirus Daily podcast by The Evening Standard and hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for it on your podcast provider. After stark infection figures were revealed by the country's top health officials on Monday, our political editor, Joe Murphy, says we will be hearing from the Prime Minister tomorrow. He joins me now. Joe, what challenges is Boris Johnson facing this time around? Well, the Prime Minister, Bonnie, is going to be talking to the nation tomorrow afternoon. I'm expecting at the moment it to be a press conference at about four o'clock and we'll wait and see, but I imagine he'll take questions. And then there'll no doubt be a statement separately to the House of Commons from the Health Secretary. Um, although this isn't yet confirmed, but Parliament has been getting quite uppity about wanting to be kept informed and given the chance to have its say. How is the Prime Minister expected to strike this balance between the health of the economy and the health of the nation? All the mood music that I'm hearing from officials and ministers in private, but also in their public statements, is that it'll be a form of social lockdown. That is, it's designed to keep the economy going, and even Professor Whitty today warned of the effects of stopping the economy altogether and how that would feed into social uh, disadvantages and poverty and eventually bad health um, while cutting down on the fun bits of life I'm afraid to say there'll be shorter opening hours or perhaps closures of pubs and restaurants and most importantly of all there'll be less social interaction between us and our friends from other households All the scientific research shows that this virus is transmitted by people socialising with each other, especially if they socialise late into the night. London's Mayor Sadiq Khan has said he is extremely concerned about the spread of COVID-19 in the capital. Is he likely to bring in different measures than what we'll see in the rest of the country? I think it remains to be seen because it may be the Prime Minister will satisfy Sadiq Khan and the other leaders of um, the boroughs in London. I detect that Sadiq Khan is champing at the bit to put in measures to stop the, uh, the, the alarming looking rise of cases in London. And today we've got some interesting data on this because not only have cases gone up steeply in the past week in London, but there's also been a very significant rise in the number of people being taken into intensive care units and uh, high dependency units in hospitals with COVID-19. Now this is from a very low base. But it points to a problem that is really starting. And as Witty and Valance said today, you start off with an increase in cases, especially among the young, then it feeds into older groups and more vulnerable groups, and you get a month down the line, an explosion of cases, and suddenly a huge number of daily deaths. So that's where London could be heading, and the mayor is clearly really keen to try and stop that in its tracks. Stopping things now to save a bigger stoppage later, and most importantly, to save lives. Has he been working with the Prime Minister on what measures he'd like to see brought in? Sadiq Khan is trying to work with the government, but it seems questionable whether the government wants to work with him. So Boris Johnson, we've just learned, is going to have a COBRA meeting tomorrow, but there's no news from Number 10 on whether Sadiq Khan's going to be invited. This afternoon, Boris Johnson is going to be calling the First Ministers of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but I'm told by number 10 there's no call scheduled to the Mayor of London. Now, just consider what that means. London is a city of 8 million people. That's more than Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland put together, let alone the economic importance to the whole nation of the capital city. But the Prime Minister and the Mayor have not spoken for months. Perhaps one of the biggest differences from last time round was that there's a prospect of a vaccine just around the corner. How is this playing into how the government is handling coronavirus restrictions this time round? The strategy of the government is quite plain now. It's to try and suppress that rise to prevent another huge crisis at the expense of the economy and people's social lives. And the justification for that strategy is... If we can suppress it now, then the vaccine will come towards the end of the year or in the spring and then we can actually let ourselves go, get back to normal without people being killed. 
The Health Secretary today said that we should be in position, if we're lucky, if all goes well, to have the start of a mass rollout of the vaccine early in the new year. Now, that's a very, very optimistic-sounding forecast, a very exciting one, and it implies that we might actually have it in small numbers rather than the mass rollout before the new year, actually just in two or three months' time. So there could be light at the end of this very dark tunnel. Search for the leader coronavirus daily on any podcast provider to hear more from the podcast.